Very funny guy, Tom Treason, ladies and gentlemen. Honored to have him here. Tom Treason. I was in, a, in the service four years. I was in a Marine Corps unit called NEGDF, Naval Emergency Ground Defense Force, and uh, we had a DI in Quonset Point, Rhode Island, mean ass DI. And we had a lot of black guys in my outfit from the South, and they had that Baptist upbringing. And the DI would come out in the morning and you'd say, All right, men, stand at attention. There'll be no talking in ranks. And the brothers would say, No talking, no, sir, no talking. <laughs> I said, silence. Mm, silence. There'll be some silence in there. <laughs> Keep talking. I'm putting somebody in the brig. Well, put him in the brig, Captain. God damn it. Put him in the brig. <laughs> You're not paying any attention here, are you? You don't really give a <laughs> what I'm saying, do you, Captain? I really don't. I, I want to hear about Sinatra. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Opening for Frank Sinatra was unlike anything that... Which one they, had the glass eye? I think it was Jilly Rizzo. Had the glass <laughs> Jilly Rizzo. Eye. Frank Sinatra's bodyguard had a glass eye. Sammy Davis Jr., had a glass eye. Every Christmas, Frank Sinatra would buy a set of binoculars, saw him in half, send one to Sammy and one to Jilly. You know? <laughs> and, and did you see a side of Frank Sinatra that surprised you? Yeah, the, it was something that really stunned me. It's Don't powerful. tell me he was with a guy. Yeah, he was banging Jilly Rizzo, no. <laughs> and, and that's how he got he, the glass no, eye. He was very much in <laughs> <laughs> But what, what about when he got older too? I mean. Did you see a big change? Because I know he was starting to forget the lyrics. And... Yeah. At age 78, we were all wondering, when is he going to lay it down? When is he going to quit? <clears throat> he would have hit and miss nights, but crowds loved him. They couldn't get enough of him. And uh, they, came, they were really coming to say goodbye to him. And every city we went to, they were coming to say goodbye, his loyal fans. And one night in, um, in the Mark Auditorium, there's like 20,000 people in the arena, and I did my show, and it was a good audience and everything. He, he went out. He did three songs. He was rolling. He got to the fourth song, and he totally blanked on the lyrics. And the orchestra was down in the pit, and they kept playing, not knowing that he was lost. And he started whispering into the microphone, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. Now, when I saw that happen, I went, oh, this is it. We were always wondering, when is he going to lay it down? But this is, this is the night. He's whispering to the orchestra, started to realize that he wasn't with them, and they started to wind their instruments down one at a time to an eerie silence in this huge arena. And now he's whispering, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry, I'm sorry. By that time, I was stage left, and I thought, okay, this is it. <clears throat> you know, he's gonna come off stage, and I'm gonna say, let's go home, Mr. S. It's been a great career, but it's time to go home. And he turned around, and there was dead silence, and he had tears in his eyes, and he looked like he was going to come and lay the microphone down. And the guy way up on top of the audience stood up by himself and he hollered out, That's all right, Frank. It's all right. We love you, Frank. It's all right because we love you. And he started to applaud. And the guy next to him started applauding. And the couple, and pretty soon. I'm getting chills. People, I'm getting well, chills. Keep going. <clears throat> Hundreds of people started applauding, then thousands. And pretty soon the whole arena was cheering, cheering, and cheering. He got to the edge of the stage and I thought he was gonna go home and he turned around and he went back to center stage and they wouldn't stop cheering. And finally, they calmed down and he went into the next number which was Mac the Knife and he absolutely drilled that song. He hit every nuance and every lyric. He was like he was 19 years old again. Now, <clears throat> when he finished that song, the people wouldn't stop cheering and he was ready to go into the next number when he quieted him down and he started to sing and he stopped and he pointed up to the guy and he said, I love you too, pal. And he sang for two years after that. Wow. He, two years. That guy doesn't know. That fan brought him from the ashes that night. 